People who know me very well at all know that my mind almost always operates on food. I'm almost always thinking about food. I love food. And, uh, and I've been thinking a lot lately about sloppy joes. Sloppy joes are awesome, aren't they? They're not only just the flavor in general, but I love how everything is just kind of mushed together. The sauce mixes with the meat and the onions and everything else. And, and it all, even when you, if you try and pull the bun apart there, it all just kind of comes apart together. It's all really one unit of a sloppy joe, right? But I also like things uh, that are, that are kind of separate and distinct, like a, like a good BLT, right? BLT has a nice set of layers there. You can, when you pull it apart, you've got the mayonnaise, but you also then you have a clean layer of bacon and uh, of tomato and of lettuce and, and everything's just kind of all separate and organized. And that kind of appeals to my OCD a little bit, I think. But uh, I love both of these kinds of sandwich. So why are we talking about BLTs and Sloppy Joes um, when we really ought to be talking about speech organization? Well, it's because of this. Uh, a Sloppy Joe is an amazing sandwich. But it is just that it's sloppy, right? It's it's condensed and combined, and that's not what we want for speech organization. We want our speech organization to be more like a BLT, separate, distinct layers, separate, distinct main points and ideas that, that stand out from one another. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video, some, some tips for speech organization. And uh, starting with, how do we organize these main points, our main points? So let me give you some tips on organizing main points for a speech. First of all, you ought to have between two and five main points for a speech. Um, if you have just one, that's not really distinct enough. It's just, you know, talking about one thing. But so we ought to have at least two, but you don't want any more than five at most. And I would say probably stay closer to three or four if you can, depending on what you're talking about. But if you get much more than five, then they're all going to kind of run together. It's hard for an audience to uh, distinguish and to retain information when there's more than five main points. So we're thinking about how many main points we're going to have in our speech. It ought to be somewhere in that two to five range. Each main point ought to really be its own mini thesis. When we're developing our main points, it ought to be, you know, we're going to have a central idea statement or a thesis statement, if you will, um, for this speech and overall a central idea or thesis statement, but each main point ought to really be its own little mini thesis statement in and of itself. It ought to have a declarative sentence. Whatever our main points are, should have a declarative, it should be a declarative sentence, should not be a question, and it shouldn't be exclamatory with an exclamation point or anything, but it should be a declarative sentence. You're telling the audience what the main point is here. You're not asking them, you're not shouting at them, you're declaring what it is here in this idea of a mini thesis statement. Uh, all of these should support the main thesis statement or the main central idea statement in your speech, so they should all work back to that main central idea. Um, but they they should also have their own distinct idea. When we're creating main points, we should, whenever possible, use parallel construction, uh, meaning that we're using a similar wording uh, or similar uh, structure of phrasing, those types of things, um, just to keep consistency and to help the audience identify main points and to retain main points. Parallel construction can be really helpful um, for the audience in those regards. We really want to be careful using the word and in a main point because that typically indicates that you've really got two main points and you're trying to jam them into one main point. Um, so we want to keep main points um, singular and distinctive. And when we have the word and in there and we're trying to cram that in there and it doesn't really work as well, it just kind of gets muddled. So if you have a main point and you have that word and in there, try and determine it. Is this really two separate points or, or is it, is it, you know, legitimately one thing and just happens to have the word and in it. And then we want to think about primacy and recency. The ideas of primacy and recency in communication indicate that uh, an audience or, or, you know, receiver of a message is going to remember best what they hear first and what they hear last. So what they hear first is primacy and what they heard most recently is recency. So if we have a really critical main point, something we really want the audience to hang on to, it should not be stuffed in the middle of five main points. It should be first or it should be last. Um, and if we, if, you know, we want to look at it and say, is this really a main point that I need anyway, if we're going to put it in the middle there, but, um, but our most critical information should be, should uh, be involved in our first main point or our final main point. Um, so that we can um, give the audience a better chance of remembering that based on the, the principles of primacy and recency. Another thing to keep in mind when we're talking about speech organizations is the importance of transitions, right? We're working the audience through these two to five main points, however many we have here, 
But we, to help them identify these main points and help them know what's coming, we want to work with transitions or connectives that move us between those two points, right? Um, you know, again, thinking about food, which won't surprise anybody. Um, when I think about, you know, food, especially plates of food, my friends and family give me a hard time because, you know, I see people with this all the time, right? They just throw it all on their plate and it's all piled up there and that's colorful and it looks, looks nice or whatever, but I can't do that. If it were up to me, we would all have these little dividers on our plates, right? I like my food to be separate. I like my, you know, uh, one thing that I would get rid of these vegetables, first of all, but I like my meat to taste like my meat and I like my potatoes to taste like my potatoes and I like my mac and cheese to taste like my mac and cheese. I don't want my mac and cheese to taste like meat. I want my meat to taste like meat and my mac and cheese to taste like mac and cheese. I want that separation. I want that distinction. That's what we want, again, in our in our speeches. We want these separate, distinct main points that we've created, these two to five main points that are really identifiable and distinct. We're going to help the audience by using transitions to identify when we're moving from one to the next and, and to help distinguish those things from one another. Okay. <clears throat> so there are a variety of different types of transitions that we can use uh, or connectives that we can use to move from one, pain, one main point to the other and provide that structure to our to our. Uh, uh, to our speech. Um, one is called signposts and signposts are very simple. It's usually just one word or a couple words that indicate to an audience, okay, we're moving on here. They literally, just like when you're driving down the road, they're called signposts because that's really what they do. When you're driving down the road, you see that signpost there and it says this many miles to this place or how many miles an hour is the speed limit or there's a curve coming up, right? That's what we're letting the audience know by saying things like first, or second, or next, or as I conclude, those are signposts. We're sticking those signposts in the, in the ground during our speech saying, okay, here's a main point first. Here's my first main point first. And then when we're done with that, we're going to, you know, transition by saying, secondly, I'd like to tell you about this. And that's a signpost. Or as I conclude, lets the audience know that you're bringing things in for, uh, for a conclusion, that you're closing things out a little bit. So those signposts just, you know, give that audience an indication of where we're at, that something significant is coming and, uh, and, and help them follow along and identify those different points. Okay. So signposts can be a really simple and really effective form of, uh, of transition. Uh, another is what we call review preview. Sometimes it, we have different words for these things. Sometimes we call it review preview. Sometimes people call this a transition and call the overall thing connectives or whatever you want to call it. A review preview is basically just what it sounds like. You're going to review the point you just talked about and preview the point that's coming up. You kind of mash those together into one sentence a lot of times. Now that I've discussed this, let me talk about this. Now that we've discussed signposts, let's talk about the review preview form of transition. That's a review preview. You're just saying what you just talked about and what you're going to talk about next. So not, not only does it reinforce the main point that you just discussed, but it gives an indication of a, we're going on to an, a, a different main point and B here's what that is. And the more you can say those main points, the better, because the audience may not remember every detail of your speech, but hopefully they'll be able to remember the main points. So you want to state those main points, you know, three, four, five times, at least during your speech at different times. And the transition, especially a review preview gives you an opportunity to do that. So a review preview, again, just talks about, it just states what you just talked about and state what main point is coming up next. And then you move into that next main point. Uh, rhetorical questions can also be a, a type of transition. A rhetorical question is one that doesn't really require an, a verbal response from the audience. It just, you know, is intended to, to help them think, or it's just one they, uh, the, uh, the speaker is using to, uh, to identify a, 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 an indication of a transition or things like that. So you can ask, um, you know, a rhetorical question as a form of a transition. The last two types of transition that I'd like to discuss just briefly um, are internal preview and internal summary. Uh, you won't use these a lot probably uh, for, for fairly basic speeches, but if you're giving a speech where uh, one or more of the main points is particularly complex or complicated and involves uh, several steps or several different items that the audience may need to keep track of, an internal preview and internal summary can be helpful in saying, okay, here's what we're going to be talking about. Here's the main point that we're talking about, and it involves a, B, and C. And you identify those things so that the audience can help, again, help follow along more easily. Or at the end of that main point, you may say, you know, now that we've talked about this, let me remind you that we just, you know, as part of this main point, talked about A, B, and C. 
as, a, as kind of a review for a more complicated main point. Again, not something you're going to probably do a lot in a, in a fairly straightforward or basic speech, but, but they're there and keep them in mind as uh, tools if necessary. If you have questions about how to organize your main points or, or anything about speech organization, please feel free to contact me via email. I'd love to hear from you and, and chat about this with you via email. Um, otherwise, I hope that you will take these basics and keep them in mind as part of this foundation of building a solid speech, that we ought to have uh, clear and distinct main points layered like a BLT, right? Not all mushed together like a sloppy Joe so that the audience can clearly identify uh, what our main points are in the speech and where we're headed with all of this.